Hello, this is Python in Excel part three. Today I've been looking at integrating Power Query connections with Python cells. So I've got a query here. It's connected to a an ODBC connection on my local computer, which connects to SQL Server 2022. And I'm pulling some data from this trip data table. Just to give you an idea of scale, there's about 3.5 million records in this table. So let's see if we can load that into a data frame. I'm gonna remove the counted rows step I previously loaded this to as a connection only. So you can see trip data connection only. And I've got Excel trip data in a Python cell here. So I'm going to press control enter to execute it. And you can see it's given me this hash Python exclamation point error value. And if I show the error message, it says unexpected failure. I experimented with this a bit and I found that um, 3.5 million records is well, for the type of data in this table, 3.5 million records is too much at the moment. But before you say, oh, well, this is no good, I need to be able to use lots more data than that, I wouldn't worry too much about it. I remember this is the insiders channel, this is the beta channel, this is a very, very early version of this product. I have no doubt that it will support more data in the future. But let's have a look at what I needed to do to get it to work. To cut a long story short, this kind of problem, which I suspect is due to the amount of data, is usually solved by narrowing the rows, reducing the number of rows, or some combination of those two. In my test yesterday, I was able to get about 400,000 records into a data frame with a very narrow query, but it turns out that that query was probably not much use being so narrow. So for the purposes of this demonstration, I've set it to top 10,000 rows of the columns that you can see in the query here. Before we look at the data frame, I just want to tell you that on the formula tab of the ribbon, I have changed the calculation option to partial. And my understanding is that that will prevent the data frame from being refreshed every time I do something on another sheet. Um, so that should save us some time. Um, Python cell, and I'm going to call it DF. Don't actually need to do that, but I want to. And Excel open quotes, select trip data, and press control enter. Now I've got a data frame. So that data frame should contain 10,000 records. Let's check it. Create another Python cell and we'll put df.shape zero. That should give us the number of rows. That's 10,000 records, good. And let's say in here, we'll just uh, look at the first six rows of the data frame to check that it is what we think it is. So Python cell df.head, that defaults to six rows and control alt shift m to show the data and so it has given us the first six rows of the data frame this is great before we move on to look at the kind of analysis we might do with this data i wanted to show you a bit of a gotcha that i found um, with related to spaces in query names so i'm going to rename this to trip space data if i type trip space data it says there's a problem with this formula so that's not great but not to be deterred. Now, if I put the open quote and I select it from the IntelliSense and I press tab, you can see that it's added this prefix uh, underscore XL PQ dot, and then it's put quotes around trip data. But if I try to execute that, you can see it's given me a Python error and the Python error is syntax error, invalid syntax line one. Now this is actually because we've got unescaped quotes within a Python string. This, this text here is an argument to this Python function. And this, because this is also a, an argument encapsulator at the beginning of the argument, we can't just have it in the middle of the argument without escaping it. And escaping it in Python is done with a backslash. So if I put a backslash before these uh, enclosed double quotes and execute, now we've got the data frame. So that's just a bit of a gotcha you need to be aware of. If you have spaces in your query names, you need to escape manually currently. I'm sure it will be fixed soon. You need to escape the double quotes within the string. The next gotcha I want to show you is related to connection only queries whose source is in the current workbook. So I've got a table up here which says rows to return with the number 10,000 in a single cell. I've created this connection only query called top rows, which is drilled down um, into that cell. And there's therefore a value that I can use as a parameter in my uh, trip data query. 
So you can see in the advanced editor here, I am concatenating that value into the SQL query in the hopes that I can change this rows to return value and refresh the data frame and it will change the number of records in the data frame. So I'm trying to do that um, in the old school power query way, uh, but you will see in a moment that it doesn't work. And I get a Python error. And the error is an error occurred while accessing table, table one, accessing query data from the current workbook is not supported. I suspect that that is um, a function of this being a very, very early pre-release version of Python and Excel. Uh, so don't worry too much about it, but I just wanted to point it out to you uh, in case you run into the same problem. To end on a high note, let's do a little bit of analysis on this data frame. The data frame contains details of city bike trips and they include the latitude and longitude between the start and end stations. So I'd like to calculate the distance between those stations and then calculate the mean distance by day and then plot a chart of the mean distance by day to see if there's some difference. So we calculate the mean difference using what's known as the have assign function. So let's create a Python cell and paste the code that I've got for calculating that distance. And I'm making it display uh, some text at the bottom there. Control enter. So that's my definition of my function. Next, I've got some processing of the data that I need to do to uh, group, uh, calculate the mean and group by the mean and so on and make sure it's sorted properly. So that's these steps. I'm calculating the distance. I'm converting the started at time to a date time. I am then extracting the day of the week and sorting it properly. And then I'm using a group by object to calculate the mean distance by day. We need some code to actually produce the plot. So another Python cell and let's paste this code in there. This is just some matplotlib. I remember all of these libraries are imported by default, so I didn't need any import statements. This will produce the plot that I want. Uh, and it's shown me the image data type. I can do control alt shift and M that will give me the chart. And then I can right click and use picture in cell place over cells. And that has given me a very simple chart in just a few steps. That's it for today. Though I have pointed out a few shortcomings in this video, I want to remind you that this is a very, very early release of this product. We're lucky to be able to see it at this point um, and, and perhaps give feedback into how it progresses. I think this is a great feature. I'm looking forward to see what the community can produce with it. Um, thanks for watching and have a great day.